it's Jennifer, and currently I am stuck in the middle of final season. Finals are coming up, finals are right now, I'm just engulfed in finals. So, I thought the perfect video for today would be how to stop procrastinating because I need to stop procrastinating, I need to study, and I have a couple of tips for you guys to help you guys stop procrastinating. We've all been hit by the procrastination bus before, so I decided, actually I don't, I don't know. I just wanted to, yeah, okay. Also, thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're looking to create a website, domain, or online store, make sure to check out Squarespace. If you like this video, make sure to like it, not just emotionally. Subscribe if you haven't already and you like my videos, and turn on that notification bell because if you do and comment down below, you might be featured as shout out of the week at the end of my next video. So, without further ado, let me tell you how to stop procrastinating. The first tip that I have is to give yourself the first tip that I have is to give yourself a time limit. I work best under pressure even though it stresses me out so much. I had this problem of not doing work at all until my essay was due like the next day or I had my exam like in a couple hours. It was really really bad. If you're like me and you will only work when there's time pressure, set a timer for yourself on your phone or on like an actual timer. So setting a timer kind of puts me in that pressure mode where I actually will work and do things efficiently. Even if you don't finish on time, you'll hopefully have been working as efficiently as you could, which whenever I use this timer trick, I actually really do work really efficiently. I use really twice in the same sentence. This is why I'm in school. The second tip is to just start, and I know this is so much easier said than done, but when you're starting a project and you're kind of just thinking about it, there's a siren. But when you're thinking about the project or essay that you're supposed to be doing, your brain kind of interprets it as a harder task than it really is. So say for example you have an essay, just start typing up like an intro or something. Even if it's really bad, at least you have an intro rather than no intro at all. You can always go back and edit it. I'm a perfectionist, so this is one of my biggest struggles because I'm like, oh, I need it to be really good. But always remember that you can go back, like things are not gonna stay that way. And once you have something on the page, you have something to work with. Also, once you start your project, your brain automatically just wants to complete the task. And so you'll be more motivated to continue whatever it is that you need to be doing. Waiting. Waiting. Hear those sirens? That's the police coming to arrest you procrastinators. That was really bad. Number three goes along with number two, and that's to start with the task that you like most because when you do things that you like, your brain releases dopamine, which makes you happy. That will create this mindset of wanting to continue. It'll motivate you to want to actually do the rest of the task. I always do this thing with my voice where I like go up and... Number four is to break up your project or your task into smaller bite-sized pieces. So I'm gonna go back to my essay example. If you have an essay, you can break it up into brainstorming, research, outlining, writing the essay, that kind of stuff. And you can schedule out how long you plan on working on each task. That way you give yourself kind of like a time limit and also you can check off each task once you're done, which is the most satisfying part. When you're thinking about a big project that you're supposed to work on, it can seem really, really daunting. Once you split it into sections or write out what you're supposed to do exactly, it won't seem nearly as difficult to do. So in the last tip I talked about scheduling things and planning out your time. Well this next tip is to actually track your progress. I feel like not a lot of people do this and you can end up spending a lot of time on something and not really know that you're spending time on something. So I would write down when you started a task and then when you finished it also write that time and then write when you started the next task and when you ended that next task. So you can actually track how efficiently you're working on each task because I feel like sometimes we think that we're working shorter or longer than we actually are. Number six is to be well rested. Take a nap if you need. I always notice that when I'm really tired I'll be reading a paragraph like 10 times over because I'm like I have no idea what you just said. If you need to take a short nap go ahead but don't be I honestly, I'm still guilty of this, but don't take long naps, especially over 30 minutes. I'd say 20 minutes is good because you don't like fully fall asleep, but you give your brain some rest time. I know a lot of you guys are probably sleep deprived right now, so after this video, take a nap or something if you really, really need to because it's just, it's just better for you. Sleep is good. The point is, take a nap if you need to and be well rested. Number 
Number seven is pretty obvious, but it's to reduce distractions. Anything from your phone to your laptop to like clutter on your desk, anything that you need to clear, go ahead and do that or move to a space where there are no distractions. With things like your phone, I know those are highly distracting. So I literally take my phone sometimes and I like chuck it across the room onto like a soft surface, of course, so it doesn't crack. That makes it like harder to reach and I actually have to like get up and a lot of the times I'm like way too lazy to get up and go across the room to get something that makes me sound so lazy but it's a good thing in this case and whenever I think about my phone or think about going to get my phone I recall the reason why it's across my room in the first place oh there was also this other time where my new iPhone X came in the mail and I had a midterm the next day and I really wanted to unbox it but I knew that if I opened the box I would play with it like the entire night and would not study so what I did was I got my roommate to put the box on this like really high shelf that I couldn't reach without a chair because I'm really short and so I studied the entire night and as a reward once I got out of my midterm I got to open up the box and play with the phone also I literally see this in every single study video that I do but I use this app called the self-control app which you can get on any Mac device the app basically blocks certain websites that you choose to block for a certain amount of time it's a lifesaver <laughs> Wow, did you hear that? <laughs> Alright, the next tip is something called the 3 2, one trick. Basically, when there's a task that you should do, but you keep putting it off, instead of pushing it to the side, go 3, 2, 1, and when it hits 1, you get up and do it. Stop whatever else you were distracting yourself with and just go do it. And I didn't realize this, but I've actually been doing this for like years and years. It kind of like pumps you up for some reason, I don't know why, but the task has to be something that's possible and that you can do right at that time. So for example, if you have to be cleaning your room, but you're distracted, you're on your phone procrastinating, count down from three, two, one, turn off your phone and just clean your room. For some reason, this works for me. The point of this trick is to eventually get you to build good habits over time. So I'll link a video down below explaining this whole thing because I feel like I learned a lot from that video. I think it's a really genius concept that I've actually been... <sighs> I'm like calling myself a genius that I've actually been using for so long. All right, those are all my tips. Keep in mind that you probably won't stop procrastinating overnight. These tips aren't meant to get you to stop procrastinating now. It's meant to help you build good habits over time. Hopefully, eventually, we can get to that place together where we're all doing things we're supposed to be doing and a life is good. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and listening to me babble on for I don't know how many minutes. I want to say thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Creating a website was actually something that I've been procrastinating doing for a long time because I've wanted to do it, but I don't know, the task just seemed really daunting. But then I tried it with Squarespace and it's actually super easy. So my website is generation-diy.com. Go check it out. I'm still working on some stuff because it's a work in progress and I'm always continuing to make it better. There's so many things I love about Squarespace. Like, they have so many cool, beautiful templates to choose from, and I had a hard time choosing one because they're all so nice. Everything is online on the website. You don't have to download anything. And if you ever get stuck or anything, they have award-winning 24-7 customer service. Also, if you already have a domain somewhere else, you can totally transfer it to Squarespace. It's really simple. And if you want to create an online store, you can also create that on Squarespace, which is so cool. So if you're interested, go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch your domain or website, use squarespace.com slash generation DIY or the code generation DIY for 10% off. But yeah, I think that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out of the week is right here. And that is pretty much it. I will see you beautiful faces next time. Bye!